Hello everyone, Physicus here. Welcome to another tutorial. In this one we will go over the basics of navigation in the Viper. Specifically, how to follow a flight plan using the horizontal situation display HSD page, as well as the steer point STPT page on the ICP. This tutorial is not intended to be an extensive explanation about navigation and its associated systems, but I believe that if you follow this tutorial, you will be able to navigate effectively. Let's get into it. First, let's have a look at the flight plan and how it can be adjusted in the 2D map. The flight plan starts at the airbase you're departing from, with lines connecting the different points you're supposed to fly over. You can move the steer points by dragging them with your mouse. You can check at what time you're expected to be at each steer point, as well as the speed and altitude you should be at when you get there, by checking the flight plan page. You can check and adjust each of these fields, like for example, on steer point 1, you can change your takeoff time to be earlier or later. Underneath, you have the altitude, true airspeed, and calibrated airspeed desired when reaching that steer point. After that, you have the desired formation you should be on, the actions to be taken while on the way and upon reaching that steer point, as well as the type of climb and descent indicated. The action at steer point 3, for example, is holding point, and it has a duration of 6 minutes so you're expected to orbit there for that amount of time. These holding points are put in place, on most occasions, to allow flights departing at different times and sometimes from different airfields to marshal together so that the package goes to the target area as a cohesive unit. As you can see, the final steer point for this flight plan is steer point 9. However, if you check steer point 10, there are indications for this one as well. This is the alternate field, if for some reason you are unable to land at your home base. There will not be a line connecting to the alternate field, and it's by default the last steer point on this list. Additionally, when there are pre-planned threat steer points, either when you create them or if the mission already has them, you can check their coordinates while on the aircraft by selecting the steer point in question. Pre-planned threat steer points are used more for situational awareness rather than a point you had to fly to. These will be covered on future tutorials. Make sure to study your flight plan before every mission and make any adjustments you feel are needed. You just took off from your airbase. Let's have a look at the symbology relevant for navigation. First, the data entry display or DED. On the main page of the DED, this field represents the selected steer point. You can move the cursor to the steer point field by using the data control switch DCS and then using the DED increment decrement switch or rocker to cycle through the steer points. On the HUD, you have the following information. The selected steer point is shown here along with the distance and nautical miles to it. This is the steering cue. It is always pointing to the selected steer point. If you position the aircraft in a way that this is on the flight path marker, FPM, it will represent that the aircraft is pointing directly at the steer point. This is the steer point symbol, only present on the HUD when the aircraft is facing the selected steer point. Now let's have a look at the horizontal situation display, HSD. If you zoom out enough, you will be able to see the entire flight plan represented here. The selected steer point is shown as a filled circle, while the others are shown as hollowed out ones, connected by lines representing the flight path. You can cycle through the steer points manually, like I showed earlier. Alternatively, you can set the steer points to cycle automatically when you're getting close to them. Go to the steer points page by pressing 4 on the ICP. Here you can see the selected steer point, the cycling mode it's on, manual or automatic, its coordinates, its elevation on the ground, and at what time you're expected to be there. If you hit sequence on the DCS, you will change the cycling mode. In automatic, as you are approaching the steer point, the system will automatically cycle to the next one. 
I recommend having this on manual if you plan on orbiting a steer point, like for example, when you're working over a target area. And there we have it. These are the basics of navigation on the Viper. What I showed is just navigation using the steer points in the system. This is not considered to be navigating in VFR or IFR. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.